it is time to welcome Ben and Crystal to the stage. <laughs> My What's brain. Up, hi, 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 hi. How are you? Hey. Oh my god, have you been going on? Have you been doing this for six hours? It feels like longer, but yes. Oh yes. my goodness. No, it's been absolutely super fun. It's like it's just uh it's like a it's like a an extended webinar of non-stop information and brilliant speakers. And I'm just like, I I don't know if any more of this can go into my brain, but fortunately I can watch it uh le later in pieces. So um we are very excited to have you here. Thank you very much. We've got Thanks for having us. Yeah. Crystal Tang right here. I'm going to um, just do a little intro to the webinar and then we are going to kick off with the questions. So in okay. this webinar, uh, we want to touch base on the search generative experience or SGE. Um, from a recent poll that we did, uh, we found that 33% of local marketers hadn't heard of SGE. 41% of local marketers didn't feel confident that they understand it. And 73% of local marketers don't know how it will affect the local results. And that, fortunately, is where you come in as local search experts who live and breathe the latest changes in the industry. We need you to help uh, me and everyone and the audience get a better feel of what SGE is and, and what to expect. So, um whether today we put their mind at ease uh, or inspire them with ways to uh, tackle the change in the industry, we can all hopefully leave feeling a bit more confident and knowledgeable uh, and thinking about what SGE is going to basically mean to us. So we're going to just kick this off quickly with a quick poll. So we're going to ask our attendees um, to share a little bit about their feelings uh, towards SGE. Are we doing a poll or are we just writing stuff in the chat? Someone's going to tell me. No poll. Okay, tell me in the chat. How are you feeling about it? How are you feeling about it? Do you know what it is? Have you actually managed to get in and check it and see what it's like? A good point, Simon. Um, have we had SGE in the UK? UK? Um, no. no, I don't think so. Actually, no, as of so. today, yes. No. I was going to say it just, I thought yesterday it just launched in India and Japan. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's it right. Just, yeah. yeah. So I don't think it's the UK yet, but it's out of the US. Um, India and Japan just launched yesterday. Yep. Um, so, of course, I, I would imagine it makes sense why a lot of pollsters don't feel confident yeah. with it because it is a very US specific test. Yeah, um, for sure. And <laughs> yeah, so, we'll probably have it by the end of the year, Claire. I think Wendy Wendy Moon has summed it up with her with her emoji. Like emoji. Um, it it is um, yeah. So I think I've read some stuff about it. I've seen some screenshots, uh, but I haven't really played around with it myself. So um, what we're going to talk about first is um, this is to either of you. What do we know about SGE so far? What do we actually know about it? So I wanted to address, um, there's a couple questions in there, like, is it the same thing as BARD? Is it the same thing as, you know, as others? But there's a few different, I think, features and functions around AI. So it's important to be aware of it. So SGE, which is Google Search Generative Experience, is basically AI within Google Search. You don't go to another website. You don't go outside of it. It does leverage some of the similar functions that are in BARD, but BARD is kind of a standalone function, um, whereas SGE is Google's re-envisioning of what Google search is. And that is what is not available in the UK um, and as of right now, just in the US, in Japan and India. Um, there are very similar, there are similarities between ChatGBT and BARD and some of these other features, but SGE is a little bit separate. So anytime we reference it, we're speaking specifically about like the, the Google uh, experience. The in-search experience, Yeah, basically, yeah. And it's at the top, basically, of search. It doesn't trigger for every single query. Like, you know, I was just playing around with it last night to see if they've improved any a little bit in the, the local results, you know, and it didn't trigger for 100% of my queries. You know, um, so it's kind of a guessing game to Google to figure out whether basically AI can really help summarize what you're trying to figure out. 
and then lead you down the path of more questions. Um, which is a whole other feature, actually. That, that's the part I love about SGE is the, the follow-up questions because now all of a sudden you're not thinking about the follow-up questions. It's saying, well, do you want to find out about this or what about that? And it's like, mm -hmm. you know what? I didn't think about that. That's useful. Mm. Um, but yeah, so so anyway, but it is at the top of search. I mean, they're basically, if you think about it, the, really what they did is, is they had to kind of rush and catch up to what Bing was doing. So in a sense, they almost mirrored exactly what Bing was doing. Um, but the Bing chat is completely different because it kind of integrates some of the better features of chat GBT, at least in creative mode. Whereas when you're looking at something like SGE, it is totally not doing that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say one of the biggest differences I know with SGE is like, as we mentioned, it is in search experience. Um, so most of the time, whenever you're searching, you're doing very similar searches as you would right now that would generate maybe a map pack, a shopping ad, but the result you get with SGE is very different. And it's delivered in a way that Google saying, this is the answer. Whereas with like a traditional search result, they're like, here's a lot of information you can use to make mm -hmm. your own decision. So mm -hmm. I think from like a consumer perspective, it's a little bit different. And that's where a lot of the skepticism you'll see, like within the chat, like people saying like, oh, they're getting this stuff wrong. I think to the average consumer, they don't know they're getting that stuff wrong. And that's why I think like marketers um, are, are a little bit skeptical about that information. So one little thing about that, um, and that is, is that with anything that is, and I'm going to say AI, because it's not true AI, it's machine, it's a large language model, it's machine learning, it's semantic search, kind of all wrapped up into one. It's computers doing computer stuff is really what it is. So it's kind of a, is that when you, well, some queries, you will actually get back three to four answers in one SGE result. And if you read them, you'll notice that there's just a slight variation between the pieces of information. So it's not giving you a 100% concrete result. It's pulling data in from lots of different sources. Sometimes I've seen up to 30 sources where, and it's just trying to piece it all together and trying to answer basically what you've asked. And I think that's also the limitation of SGE at this time too. For sure. I think that um, some of this you have um, covered in your answers here, but um, what are the main ways that um, SGE differs from the other AI integrations on the market right now, like ChatGBT, BARD, Bing, AI? What Anything else to add there in terms of the main differences? I will say that one of the things that I think SGE is focused on is um, trying to push the needle at the way they deliver information to consumers to be a little bit more conversational. However, because it's within a search, you know, platform that people are already using in a certain way, um, it's quite confusing how the information is delivered. Whereas chat GPT is a completely different interface. BARD is a different interface. So I'm a little bit more forgiving and open to getting to understand the way it delivers information. Like as Ben mentioned, it's done in a conversational way. They want you to ask follow-up questions. They want you to dive deeper. They want you to redirect. And when I say they, large language models, it's, it's not you know a person behind there. Um, but that's the intention is to actually have a conversation and discover the information. And so I think that's probably one of the, the bigger differences. And what I personally lend myself a lot more to leveraging chat GPT and BARD. Um, versus the results I'm given with an SGE. So that, that's actually a really good way to sum it up. Um, I think there's a couple layers that we can throw on top of it. And uh, recently did actually a, a webinar with um, oh, with uh, Steve Wiedman and BirdEye. And we talked a lot about this topic. Um, the problem solving solutions, right, that are more like assistance is... That's basically what they are. They're assistants, right? There is no way. Well, actually, you can write a prompt that will actually have it have a conversation with you. Um, that's another story. But, you know, you have ChatGPT, which came out in November last year, basically worldwide as far as recognition goes. And then, you know, really kicked off the, the notch. Uh, I mean, kicked it off in January. Um, this was bankrolled, of course, in part by Bing, by Microsoft. 
I forget how many billions of dollars they sunk into it, but a lot. <laughs> um, you know, and ChatGPT basically took the world by storm because it was very accessible. It was easy to understand, and it was you ask a question, you got an answer. Um, unfortunately, we also found out about hallucinations at that time as well, you know, where if you asked it to say, what are your sources? What are your citations? Uh, ChatGPT would throw up all over itself. And so then you have, now we've got Bing search. So Bing search is as, again, as close to Bard as you can get, right? Because Bing search came first, Bard kind of mirrored Bing. However, with Bing search, you can go into creative mode, which is basically ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. um, I still see Bing as a pseudo assistant, really. Um, the search results are horrible, but it's Bing. So I guess we accept, we expect this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but then you have Anthropic, which is Claude. Claude is a better forward facing chat GPT. Um, also has a huge... Uh, number of tokens. It has over 100,000 tokens. Just to put that into uh, perspective is you have ChatGPT, which is 35,000 or 25,000 tokens. A token is a letter, a space, right? And that can actually be multiple tokens per letter. But with 100,000 tokens, you can put in the Encyclopedia Brit Britannica and you can go ahead and query anything against it. So it'll take cool. an entire book or more Encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, so there's that. So those are the, the assistants that are out there. But then like Crystal was so eloquently stating is SGE is a little bit different. SGE is about the conversation. It's about figuring out what you're trying to do. You know, as a normal searching, uh, as a normal, you know, uh, as a marketer, right? We've always used it where we drill down and we drill down and we drill down until we get into the questions that we want. Well, now what Google wants to do is, is they want to use SGE, not for our generation, by the way. This is not for us. This is for teenagers. That's actually who, yeah. yeah. I'll get into that in a minute, but, um, but yeah. So anyway, they're trying to basically uh, be that one answer and it's still in learning mode, which is why it's not perfect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh... <laughs> The, you, you've answered some of this already. It's like, how is this? But now let's think about this in the context of uh, local search. You know, how is this going to change, basically, the local search experience? What do we need to do to get ready for that? I will say, um, especially if anyone's done or prepares to do any local searches in SGE, um, it's very different. You do not get... Um, what you traditionally understand today is like a map pack. Um, oftentimes you're getting information. Um, you are getting a lot of sources and articles. And I actually think, I think this week we've seen Brody um, and a few others start reporting that there's changes in the SERP uh, where you'll see the mentioned in showing uh, in the search results. That's very similar to what a lot of these links look like in SDE. So it's my... Uh, thought that it's probably Google trying to merge the worlds together and then probably trickle in some of these changes slowly mm -hmm. over time. So it's not just like thrown in everyone's face, a completely new search experience. Um, but I think that is is one of the things that makes this quite unique and that there's not your, your Google business profile. It doesn't show up as a result right now in, in GBP as it stands. However, Google is pulling a lot of information from your GBP profile. So it's definitely still important. You will see things like reviewers mentioned this, average star rating is this, but it just shows up in a search result. So it's quite interesting to see how it's going to, you know, play out. Like if there's always going to be a map pack, if they're going to merge that at some later date, but oftentimes now you'll see the name of the business, a few articles cited, features and, and details that are pulled from your GBP profile, but it doesn't display the same way as, a, as, a, as the map pack does today. Yes and no. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> if you do HVAC near me or personal injury lawyer near me or something like that, right? Um, it triggers what I'm, what I would consider actually a five pack um, because you'll see five different companies mentioned. Okay. And then you'll see also a map on the right-hand side. You don't get the traditional one box 
We, that's gone, at least as of today. The one box is completely gone. Okay, fine, whatever. You And this is actually new, but you click on a profile name, right? And then in line, it shows the one, basically the GBP profile. Uh, in actually a modified way, by the way, a slimmed down data way. The thing that is interesting is, is if you look at the SGE result, and then you scroll down and you look at the traditional three pack result, more often than not, they're not going to be ordered the same. So number one, two, and three might still be in that five pack somewhere, but it might be like one, two, and four. It's very strange. And then you look at the sources. And now this, this is also a little bit new, and that is there's a little down arrow, basically. And this is where it's parsing different pieces of information as answers. But if you click on the down arrow, now you get the what they consider the sources for this, for the answer. And what's interesting is, is Google will reference itself. It'll say one source is Google. <laughs> and that's basically a link to your Google business profile is what that is if you click on it. Um, which will get you, I think, to I'm not sure actually if that'll get you one box. I gotta test that. So, but then it'll bring in stuff that I think is just complete utter junk. It'll bring in Yelp, for instance. And not only will it bring in Yelp, it'll bring in Yelp multiple times as a source. And then if you click on that source and you go to it, and you're like, okay, well, great, where's XYZ law firm in Yelp? And it's not even on the page. So Again, it's kind of a little disconnect as to how it's actually functioning. Yeah, um, and I will say it changes almost every single day. So yeah. like what I saw and was seeing a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago are completely different. Like even as Ben mentioned, like, you know, the drop down mentioning sources, that is new. Historically, well, historically, it's been a couple of months. Um, <laughs> there was just like a handful of sources in the top right corner that were associated to a couple of the results. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because like to Ben's point, sometime I've seen five results, but if I do a search right now for plumbers near me, I get 10 results and they're grouped by different services. It'll say, oh, these are really? plumbers that offer drainage services. These are plumbers that also offer heating and cooling. I didn't include that in my search whatsoever. It is changing constantly. Um, and it's, it's definitely using functionality and features that are within GBP profile. So I yeah. can like pretty confidently say it's not going away. The way we interact with it might change a bit. Um, the way that, you know, end customers see your Google business profile might be a little bit different, but it's all of the results show that the information within there that Google's always said has been really important to add is still very prominent within SGE. Yeah. And, and let's be real here about something, first of all. Okay. That is, this is not going away. Google has dug in on this and they have product managers who own this piece of the product. Actually, multiple divisions probably have product managers that own this. That, that own this. So they have so much invested in this. They know this is the future. They know they have to do this. I'm going to get back and to get into a stat in about a second on this. But also, let's again, be real about it. They have an amazing amount of data that they're working off of. So we know that Google rolls things out. They will test, 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 iterate, keep it in beta for a long time, probably. This is going to be probably here for at least, at least in beta for at least a whole another year, which is not a long time, but it feels like it's going to be a long time. Mm. Um, but again, to come back to it, I don't think it's going to necessarily, it's not going to kill SEO. It's not going to kill local SEO. You know, it's like people were before when ChatGPT came down and going, oh, my God, my job is over. You know, you can do a technical audit in ChatGPT. No, you can't. Sorry. It can help you with things. Um, you know, so so again, I think this is going to do nothing but help our industry. We're going to have to figure out how to train Google mm -hmm. in a sense. Right. We're going to have mm -hmm. to we're going to have to speak to as SEOs. We're going to have to learn how to speak to basically machine learning. But the beautiful thing is, is that for people who have been in this industry for a long time, we know this. Mm. Things change. They change almost every couple of years, but we adapt. Mm. This is going to be a little bit harder to adapt to, but eventually people are going to start seeing some patterns as things get more kind of concrete. 
And right now they're just not concrete. And Lily Ray has some amazing research that she has done. She's been really keeping on top of this, like uh, overall. And so, you know, I would say that, you know, follow Lily. If you really want to know where this is going, mm -hmm. and don't panic, mm -hmm. just kind of mm -hmm. adjust. Panic. Um, <laughs> one stat that I just want to throw out there really quickly is that, uh, and this also came out yesterday too, in that same article that you were mentioning um, about uh, India and getting rolled out there. And that is this, is that Google's done uh, quite a bit, of course, extensive research on who is using SGE. Now, SGE is invite only. You have to actually toggle it on after you get the invite. So that's one barrier of entry. But what they've got found out is, is that out of all their users that are using SGE, the main group is in the age range of 18 to 29. That's the biggest age group. And that represents, by the way, it's like 20% is what it comes down to. And this is why I say they're not doing SGE for us. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're, we're contributing to it in a kind of way. But really, if you look at the full vision of SGE, they're going to be bringing in uh, more rich media. Things like they talked about, you know, YouTube shorts, TikTok, Instagram, etc. More and more into search itself. So is that really us, our age group, that is the audience? And the answer is kind of no. <laughs> it's meant for that 18 to 29. So that's how long their vision is. Their vision is, is what, the, what does that group mm. want from search? Mm. And so mm. we need that's to like, for that. Yeah, I, I think it doesn't necessarily matter to Google how big of a difference it looks to someone like me because I'm, mm. I'm not their target audience. But I also am someone that has changed over the last five years the way I search and find new businesses. I am heavily relying on like TikTok to discover new businesses and then use Google to validate the information. I'm sure <laughs> Google sees this information and that can be driving some of the, the you know, reasons behind SGE and the push for the change in discovery. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it, it's definitely quite interesting. Mm. Mm, for sure. I think that um, some people uh, worry about how, you know, the authenticity and trustworthiness of SGE and, um, you know, can we really, you know, trust it to answer our questions? You know, I look back at search in the 90s, specifically 1998, when Google first came out, right? Or kind of officially out of the back row. And, um, you know, I look back fondly on those days, but, you know, if you want to think about accuracy and how inaccurate things can be, mm -hmm. you only have to look back to those kind of the golden era, you know, of the 90s, late 90s into the 2000s. It was horrible. Yeah, you had 10 blue links, but not everything was as accurate as it could be. I mm. mean, it took, you know, years to really improve. So I think we're going to see the same thing with SGE. Yeah, yeah, I would I would say the same. I I'm assuming and it's it's quite funny. Simon mentioned in the channel, like the SEOs are going to be very critical of this. Yeah. Like, we are going to be very skeptical of it uh, because we have very high standards. We've been putting in a lot of work for years and years for our clients. And we want to make sure that's not jeopardized. Mm -hmm. But I think generally Google has so much more information about the web and businesses in general that. I think there's still a possibility for SGE to be very successful, um, but also there's a lot of room for improvement. So, I mean, of course there's gonna be mistakes, there's gonna be errors. And I still do think SGE and every AI tool is best used kind of as a suggestion. And, you know, the really important decisions are made, you know, with, with someone that has experience and not just blindly trusting Google. It's the reason why, like, yes, Google might say this restaurant is five stars, but I wanna look at the photos. And I want a recommendation from a personal, like a friend, like that is not changing. Um, so I think while we're hypercritical, this is a pretty big change. I think generally it can be trustworthy, but we still should push on Google to make the changes. Like, as we mentioned, you know, Lily Ray's been very instrumental in her research of, of SGE. Like every time I see her, her tweet or something she writes, she talks about the citations and how impactful that is to businesses. And now we see Google start, you know, adding a lot more citations mm -hmm. in SGE. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely yep. important, I think, for us to push on that. Yeah. And just to dovetail into that really quickly, Claire, because uh, that's all uh, amazing, great info, Crystal. And that is, is that, you know, 
use the feedback feature of SGE. Um, we know that, you know, Crystal and I know as, as PEs that the teams actually do read that feedback. It doesn't just go into a black hole. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so use it. I mean, if you want this tool to be something that is useful to you as a professional and useful to your clients as customers, then use that, that feedback tool because one piece of feedback can actually impact the entire product. Well, that, yeah, well, that's good to know, isn't it? That it's not like, you know, drop your suggestion in this suggestion box and then we will ritually burn it at the end of every day and nobody will read it. That's brilliant. Um, it's a suggestion box with a shredder right underneath it. <laughs> yes, straight yeah, into the say, shredder. <laughs> first, go to your Google account, change your age range to 18 to 24, because that's really who Google cares about, and then provide the suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, and then you'll get to test all the stuff probably faster as well. So uh, I'm wondering who all, the, all, who all these entrepreneurial are, 18, 29-year-olds that are signing up for all the tests at Google. I thought that was just old people like me, but obviously clearly not. So um, uh, thinking, coming back to uh, local SEOs again, um, what, you know, what do we need to do? Do we know what we need to do to gain visibility? Um, and do we need to worry about our sort of current marketing efforts and whether or not they're going to leapfrog over to this new environment? So I would say the best thing to do, of course, if you're in the US or now India, Japan, or maybe can spoof your browser location, go do a couple searches, <laughs> go do some searches to see what it looks like. Understand you're still showing up. You're still showing up primarily for the searches that you were showing up before in the same areas. What's being displayed is a little bit different. It's important to see those sources that are being cited. Um, they do also change as well. That's another thing that changes. It's a list of sources. Like one day, you know, Google yeah. might have the BBB as a source. Another time they might have Yelp. They might have a different like local blog. But understand how you're being displayed and the information Google's pulling. Um, it's not going to drastically change any strategy. But I think, as, as Ben mentioned, it's our job and our role to be informed and help guide and ease our customers into this new environment. But that's that's really the most you can do right now. Yeah. You know, I, I, I figure where I heard it this week, but somebody said that, well, Google has said that they're going to devalue links even more and go more to... SGE, right? Uh, a, I, I personally have not read that and I don't believe it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I think that that's probably a rumor because it doesn't make any sense, right? If we take a look back at the history of Google search, you had, when they first came out, you know, Backrub or whatever you want to, whatever, whatever, yeah, it was Backrub uh, and Google search in 1998, it was dependent almost 100% based on links, right? That's what they did. That's what the patent read. And then over time, they grew and grew and grew as far as what type of, you know, new signals they would use to rank a piece of content. And as more and more content became available, as more signals became available, I think, you know, in the 2000s, we were up to 250 separate signals. Then all of a sudden, a hummingbird comes along. And the entire industry threw up their hands and went, crap, thanks, Google. Right? You've changed the game again. No, they didn't. They still rely on those 250 signals. Hummingbird was all about bringing semantic search, which is basically what we're looking at kind of, kind of with SGE um, to the table, right? Which did nothing but improve search. And it, and it forced marketers to start looking into the meaning of things and to explaining and answering questions before they're asked, basically. Um, so I don't think that we are going to have to change a lot of what we are doing in the near term. I think that overall, because it's a large language model, it can learn things very quickly on its own, right? So we don't need to prod it as much. But will things like schema be necessary? That's a question. I think, again, links are still the bedrock, and I think they're still going to be necessary. But is a unstructured versus a structured citation going to be something which is more important? And I actually think that the unstructured citation is going to become, and we've kind of seen this a little bit since Hummingbird, is going to become even more important. So if somebody references you and just mentions mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. they don't actually mm -hmm. link to you, Google mm -hmm. can understand and say, okay, well, you mean this. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I used to talk about uh, semantic search, you know, I used to use, bring up the, the uh, a good example of uh, how semantic search and large language models now can, how Google can tell between things. And if you look at like the word wedding band, well, okay, well, what does that mean? Wedding band. You're looking for a wedding band. Is that a wedding band mm -hmm. or a wedding band? <laughs> you know? Um, and that's where SGC is going to come in, I really think, wonderfully. Because you type in wedding band, it's going to follow up a prompt immediately. Well, are you talking about a you... wedding band that plays music? Yeah, yeah. It's like and... active disambiguation by asking a question. It's like, whoa, okay. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so um, last question now before we move on to Q&A. We've got a few minutes for Q&A, five minutes. So how can we expect um, SGE to evolve? And is there anything that we could do um, like foundationally perhaps to prepare? So I... Go in yeah, I was going to say how it can evolve. There is, I mean, it, it's really up to Google. I think there's, we've seen in this beta so much change already. Um, I love Ben's suggestion, provide that feedback. Definitely, um, they are actively seeking feedback. That's why it's in a beta and it's not available to all countries. Um, so, you know, if you are in one of the countries you have, that has access, it's, it's quite lucky. Um, so definitely provide the feedback. Um, and I will say that there's a reason why Google's been pushing helpful content for so long. Um, there's also a reason why, like if you think of GBP and local specifically, I've always wondered why Google cared so much and pushed Q&A so consistently on profiles and on the maps. Like they'll have, do you have a question? You know, please ask a question to this business. It's like, why? No one's really looking at the Q&A. <laughs> There's a reason why they've been pushing users and businesses to interact in this conversational style. Um, I think following those cues and making sure you've you know, taken all of that advice is going to be helpful, but not much more you can prepare other than all of the really you know, best practices from a local SEO perspective. Um, links, content, written for humans, conversational content, that kind of thing. Yes, okay. yes, all of that, all of that. You know, if you look at SGE and actually if you do this for yourself, I mean, I do, <laughs> is I look up recipes all the time with SGE. Um, recipes right now, recipe sites are winning, like seriously winning at this point. But guess why? Because they've like got Krista so much saying. awful content. <laughs> well, there's that. Uh, but no, but seriously, <laughs> but the reason why is because they're answering questions uh, yes 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 helpful like crystal saying helpful mm -hmm. content mm -hmm. so now I, I will say this is that the fact of the matter is us as seos we better be doing that anyway for our clients right we sure we sure should be doing that already um you know but i think even more and more you know i think that is how we help the search results <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. All right. Brilliant. Thank you. My mind is definitely like I, I'm, I'm getting this SGA, SGE thing. I can. Uh, yeah. All right. OK. Because at the start, I was like, I don't want this. No, we're not having it. It was like the GA4 uh, thing. Yes. No, no, we're not having it. But OK, we'll take it. We're, we're ready now. Um, let's see what questions um, our listeners and watchers uh, have got. So, um Morris asked, do you expect that people will use Google Maps more if they get confused by these results? Possibly. Um, I think in general, uh, the trend we've seen in the last like five years is just users actually starting their discovery more on maps anyway. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Um, but I also think it's based on the user. Like if this is the new, you know, user that Google is targeting, they'll probably stay in discovery mode on search. But if this is someone like, hey, I want to stay in my ways, I just want my list of businesses and I want to know how far they are from me, we may see some of that migrate more to maps, which isn't terrible because there's a lot of a lot more new rich features on maps as well. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say no, and here's why. It is very simple that you have to opt like a, a, a kind of like what Crystal was just saying, you have to opt into this. 
So you already know that you're in for a beta experience. Um, but also additionally, the five pack or 10 pack or, or whatever it is today um, does for the most part mirror the three pack result. So Google is still using its own property and own information and all those signals we talked about to mirror them basically. So, and traditionally, not all the time, but traditionally what you see in your three pack, you're going to see in your Google maps too. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a great mm -hmm. job at a local SEO at least. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I guess the answer to that would, for me would probably be probably not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, that's a good point. I was, I was thinking when Google turns this on, yes. so you don't have yeah. the opt-in option. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think some, you know, there's always going to be people that are just like, I oh, know, you know, it's not for me. But then Google exists to meet the supposedly the needs of the searcher. So we'll just see where we go with that. So let's see if we can get a couple more questions in. Um, so with SGE uh, being able to recommend locations, will there be a need for local packs in the future? Or are they just going to tell you which one to go to? <laughs> Um, I'll start, I guess. And I think the answer is, is yes, local pack is going to be necessary. You know, uh, what Google local started in 2007, I want to say, right. Wasn't it 2007, something like that. Um, and you know, and we've had local packs ever since people are used to it. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be unimaginably dis difficult for them to get rid of a three pack type of result and just give one single result mm -hmm. uh not to mention if you think about it one single result is not really good for advertisers no and i'm sorry money is in the equation here of course. <laughs> it's absolutely in the equation primary factor <laughs> yeah no i i completely agree i think what you don't see in sge is like your traditional map pack but the concept of a local pack three to five to seven results is still um, relevant, and I, I definitely think it's it's going to stay. Um, may change in different you know uh, scenarios, but I, I definitely think the local pack is here to stay. Brilliant! I think we have got time for one more before we need to say goodbye. Uh, what Simon? What's the most um, interesting search term you've seen in SGE so far or the most interesting SGE result for a particular search term? So I will say the one that I think so far SGE does the best at, so maybe not interesting, um, is a product search result. Mm -hmm. um, the way they deliver the product information, they deliver additionally the stores it's available at, it delivers a little bit more detail, like definitely mm -hmm. I think retailers have maybe a leg up on some of the other categories when it comes to SGE because Google's really thought um, and delivered the information in a product-based search. So um, I think from a you know solid perspective, uh, product searches are, are done really, really well in SGE. Um, yeah, I, I, I thousand percent have to actually back that one up. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Quite right too. I was looking for I was looking for a killer sound bar, um, you know, gaming sound bar yesterday actually, and I said, you know, so I put in, you know, best sound bar 2023 Amazon, you know, gaming, and yeah, actually, I didn't even look at the organic results at all. Mm -hmm. I just went straight to SGE. You know, I had SGE on. I looked at what it said, read through it, bang, ended up on my decision and, and purchased it. So, um, but for me, what I would say the most interesting, not useful, but interesting search, search term <laughs> is actually your brand or your client's brand. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm in Google all day long typing in, you know, the name of the company and their zip code or their address or whatever the case may be looking for certain pieces of things, right? And what I have noticed is, is that more often than not, it'll actually produce an entire summary about the company and that address. And it'll tell you what else is at this address, which is useful, by the way, for spam hunting. Um, but it also gives you a really good window into how Google sees a business. And then you can also look at those sources, of course, for what they're worth. But that I found that to be the most interesting. Yeah, brilliant. Everyone's going to need to crack on with, with doing that at a minimum, won't they, to see what that looks like. So sadly, 
that is the end of the time that we have available for questions. But we could be here all day and all night. Uh, so I'm going to have to say thank you very much to the two of you and sadly to say goodbye to the two of you. Um, mm. But thank you for your time. <laughs> it was lovely to see you both. Thanks, Thanks for, so much having, for us. having us. Yeah, well, it, was, it was awesome.